Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I'm going to take a chord voicing that I found in a YouTube video. Uh, and apparently it's a Herbie Hancock chord voicing. And there is sort of a reduced version of this voicing uh, that you can also play on guitar that I actually use once in a while. I'm not really gonna focus too much on that. Uh, I'm just gonna take the complete voicing and then turn that into this really huge arpeggio that is fun to mess around with. Talk a little bit about that, uh, about how it's constructed. And then I'm also going to show you how I take this voicing and how I look at it and turn it into some other things by, well, really just by messing around with the different parts of it. Uh, and in that process, I'm going to make a few different arpeggios that sound pretty good. And I'm also going to come up with some chord voicings that I, that I never used anyway before I started making this video. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. So I guess the first thing we should look at is just the complete chord voicing. You can actually play the complete thing, at least not in all keys on guitar, you can play it in E. Uh, I'm going to use A minor because it's a minor 11 voicing uh, as an example here. And the, that voicing then, if you play the complete voicing, would be this. So we have the root, A, the fifth, the minor third, 11, and then the seventh and the ninth. So we have a minor 11 voicing. Now, of course, if you want to use this voicing on guitar, then you can just leave out the lower A and then play this, which is quite playable. That's also a voicing that I use quite often. Uh, of course, it's a five note voicing, so it's pretty full and it's maybe not the most uh, flexible voicing to work with in your comping. But if you have a place where you want to sustain a minor 11 chord sound, there are those places, then this is a good option for that for sure. The easiest way to understand this arpeggio is probably to split it up because it's a six note arpeggio and you can split it up in two groups of three notes. That's also how you would do it if you were playing on piano, you would play the lower three notes in one hand and the higher three notes in the other. And if we look at the lower part, then we have this, so that's an A minor triad, so, and uh, that's an open voice triad, so you probably already know some of the open voiced inversions. And then the higher part is a G major second inversion triad. So just a basic triad inversion. So the basic idea that I had from this was actually just to play the whole thing as an arpeggio. And the easiest way to do that is probably just to play one note per string. Uh, so that would be essentially this. And I've added this extra 11 on top of it. Uh, I think that's just from messing about and, and then I thought that sounded nice. And uh, you can of course use this, let, let's say that you want to use this on an A minor 7 in a 2 5 one in G major, then that would sound like this. So here I'm just playing the arpeggio, so... And then on a D7 altered, I'm first playing an E flat minor triad, and then a G flat major 7 sharp 5, and then resolving with uh, B flat and A flat to A, which is the ninth of G major seven. Once you start to work with the arpeggio and the two layers of the arpeggio, then you have the lower part that is open voice triad. And actually the idea of having open voice triads on uh, a set of three strings that are next to each other is actually really nice if you want to use uh, those as arpeggios because they get a little bit tricky with all the string skipping that's involved. Uh, so having them like this is pretty useful. So that's also something that's worth checking out. It gets, of course, because you have the stretch here, it's, I find it easier to play than, um, than you might imagine. Uh, but at the same time, as soon as you go down to the G here, at least for me, this is, I have to sit completely different with the guitar if I want to do that stretch. I can do it from A and then I can move up and probably I can get up to, uh, the G is still getting a little bit uncomfortable, so I wouldn't do that. But there are places where you can work with that, and it's also nice to have some things that are gonna only work in a few places, because then you're, you're only gonna use them there. One of the first things I do if I have an, a structure like this is to see if I can think of it in some sort of context and then see what happens if I start moving around the scale. That's just a really easy way to, um, to come up with some more out of whatever you have that you think sounds good, because I... I like the sound of this one, so it makes sense to try and look for other things that will also work. 
that are similar. This is an A minor 911 voicing and I already used it as a two chord in G major. So maybe to move it around a G major scale would be kind of obvious. I think the first place to start to look is probably to move it up um, to, uh, diatonic third up to C. So then we have this arpeggio. Now here, I'm really just transposing the whole thing. So the lower part is a C major open voice triad. And then instead of having the G major triad, and I have a B minor triad on top of it. So we get first C major, oops, and then, then the, the B minor triad. So that's one way of doing that. And now we have two arpeggios that we can use. With the A minor arpeggio, it actually turns out that I can of course use the top part of it as a chord voice. And that's actually also still true. That's always worthwhile checking. And that's also true for this one. So here I kind of have like a pretty nicely so nice sounding C major 7 sharp 11 voicing. Because of course, I should have mentioned that as well, if we look at this, so we have a C major, and then we have a sharp 11, major 7, and a 9. So we have a C major 7 with a 9 and a sharp 11. And we can move the voicing one more time, so if we move it from C up to D, again, thinking in the two layers, so the C major triad is going to be a D major triad, because we're staying in the key of G major. And the, the B minor triad is going to be a C major triad. So then we have... But a dominant because this is really a dominant chord, so it's a D7, and a D7 with a natural 11 is maybe not really that interesting. So my first thought there is just to change that into a sharp 11. So, so all the Gs become G sharps, and then we have this arpeggio. And that works really well. And actually, as a bonus, we also get a chord voicing uh, from this one that at least I didn't know. Uh, or used before, that's this one. The main reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people supporting the channel over on Patreon. I'm very grateful for that, and if you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. If you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. Instead of just moving the voicing around in the scale, we can of course also just change some of the components in there. And I think the first candidate to change is, after all, this open voice triad, because that is a little bit difficult to play. So an easier version to play than, than playing this would to just play a quintal arpeggio, so just a stack of uh, fifth intervals. So C, G, and then D. Now, this opens up for a few different options in terms of, now we have this lower structure, and then I want to put a triad on top, because that's sort of the original idea behind this whole voicing. And of course you can do several things. You can do, um, we had a B minor originally, but uh, now we can start on E because we want to have an E in there as a, as a third, just to have the third of the chord in, in this C chord. So we can play an A minor triad. And, um, but I think that's actually, that's a little bit boring. We could maybe take the C and then make it into a B. So we have, this sound, that works a little bit better. And that is, so we're using a sus, E sus triad on top. And then we're just having like notes that are not in the lower part. I think that works also a little bit better if we're not repeating notes. Uh, so we have the, the quintal arpeggio and then the third the 13th and the 7th on top, and then I'm doubling the 3rd the again on, at, as the highest note. And this doesn't really give me a voicing I can play, uh, because that's just unplayable. You could play the top 4 strings like this, I guess. But yeah, that's, that's not very practical either. You can of course repeat that idea uh, on, the, on the D7, and that will then be first a quintal arpeggio from D, and then from the third, so the F sharp, uh, a sus chord. And in this case, we're in the key of, uh, of G major. And that means that on F sharp, we have a flat five, and then we have the sus four. So we kind of have this um, F sharp diminished sus four 
uh, sound. So this sound, which is also the beginning of Inner Urge from Joe Henderson. And then we have this arpeggio. And it's of course, again, with the trito interval here, it's a little bit difficult to play, but you can also put it here if you want to. So you have to put the C up here. And that will work as well. If you want to dig into more info on how to create and use these large interval structures as arpeggios, then check out one of these videos where even one of them is about doing this with a pentatonic scale. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and it's the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And that's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and on to next week.